Oh, we already have people watching. Hello, everybody. Welcome to live stream time. Hooray. Thanks for being here. We're talking about Desert Fox events this weekend. It is here. I'm in Dallas right now, so I'm in an Airbnb. That's why I'm on this like old furniture and uh, in a kind of a wonky spot with weird lighting, but hey, we'll go with it. And um, I am going to talk to you guys about what I'm wearing this weekend at Desert Fox events. And then um, I can answer any questions that you guys have about the Blue Fox Tracker. For those of you that don't know what the Blue Fox Tracker is, it is essentially an app that works, how I like to explain it to a lot of people, is it's an app that works kind of like Pokemon Go mixed with Airsoft. So <laughs> um, what that means is it's augmented reality and you play augmented reality Airsoft and this allows, the Blue Fox Tracker allows you to see all of your teammates, it allows you to see objectives, it allows you to capture objectives and it's just a big key point in using um, or in the Desert Fox events in general. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to start answering some questions. No, I'm not. I lied. I'm, I'm spinning. I'm not going to answer questions yet. I'm going to talk about all of the stuff that I'm using and then we're going to go to the Q&A portion. So Desert Fox events this weekend. It is at D14. That's here in the Dallas area, the DFW area for those of you that aren't familiar with Texas. And registration is still open. So if you guys like what you see or if you are still waiting to register just know that registration is open until friday so if you live close to df the dfw area then you can still make it to this game and it will be a lot of fun these are actually some of my favorite games to play just because it's good for entry-level players it's good for experienced players everybody always knows what's going on so there's not a lot of confusion there's not a lot of people yelling at each other and you get to wear pretty much whatever you want as long as it's within the color scheme overall so um let's talk about what i am wearing and if you guys have watched my channel before or if you follow me on instagram i'm the tactical unicorn on instagram if you do any of that, you've seen some of my past lit outs where I was like a warrior princess queen thing, kind of like Xeno with an airsoft gun. Um, I'm actually not doing that this time. I'm trying something a little bit different because I'm not leading the forces this time. It is going to be Ronin from GMR. So any of you guys that are GMR fanboys, he will be there and I'm going to be on his team and I'm going to be wearing something a little different this time. So let's talk about what I'm going to be wearing and how many people I can trigger with this outfit. Um, for those of you just joining, this is for Desert Fox Events Battle for Delta 14. It is this weekend in Dallas, Texas. So to start off, I do wear this a lot. This is an Empire mask and <clears throat> I really like this because I feel like these give you slightly more field of vision and slightly more protection than the Dye I-4s. This is the Empire EVS in black and gold. Um, obviously, I can't use this lens at night because it is tinted, and so I don't want to be one of those people using a, a tinted lens at night. And so I will be switching to regular Eye Pro and some regular mesh face uh, <clears throat> face pro to be wearing during during the night portion of the game. But this is what I'll be wearing during the day. I always just like wearing paintball masks because I like having just one thing to put on my head as opposed to having to wear a helmet and a face pro and goggles and making sure those are all aligned so you don't get BB hits right here in that little gap. You know how you get BB hits in that little gap between your face pro and your eye pro? So I don't want that to happen. So that is why I like to wear paintball masks a lot because I know I'm never going to get hit um, anywhere that's painful in my face. But I actually prefer that you shoot me in the face when I'm wearing this because it doesn't hurt at all. So this is what I'm going to be wearing on the head. 
the rest of what I'm going to be wearing. I'm going to be mixing camos, so I'm going to really uh, anger some people, so sorry. I'm going to be wearing these Emerson AOR2. Um, I like to recommend these for girls, Emerson BDUs and pants in general. They are pretty comfortable, they are really affordable, and they actually fit girls because they're Chinese sizing and so they run a little smaller and so that's why they're a little more ideal for people with smaller frames in my opinion. Um, so if, if you have any other thoughts on that, well, I guess let me know, but it seems like Emerson gear does really well for people with small frames um, and they, they work reasonably well. They do have um, cutouts for knee pads, so I have the cry knee inserts to put inside these pants. These are actually really affordable, I think they're only like $15. So if you have, if you buy pants with knee inserts and you're like, oh, I don't want to spend more money on knee inserts, the cry precision ones are actually not as expensive as you would think for being cry. <laughs> um, next, along with that, on top, I'm going to be wearing this. This is a Russian partisan suit top. I'll put it on. Because these, this, uh, partisan suits, Russian partisan suits, are my absolute favorite thing to wear when playing airsoft because it's basically like playing in pajamas. Ta-da! And they have a hood with a little mesh right here so you can see out of that. And they're really comfortable. They also have a, a cinch-up thing right here. So... These partisan suits are so comfortable, also have pockets on them, all over them. They also have areas uh, where you can tie in foliage or anything else if you need to blend in more. They have these little, I don't know, hook loop things <laughs> that you could use to tie in. Um, I just really love wearing Russian gear. It's so comfortable, at least the partisan suits. It's like wearing pajamas. What do I do with my dogs when I travel? So sometimes, uh, most of the times when we travel, the dogs stay at home and Jet's parents watch them because they live really close to us. And then this time the dogs are actually with us and since we're on this really long road trip, the dogs are traveling with us on this long road trip. So it's been fun to have my dogs. Um, they're getting used to traveling as much because like Fetty Dog, our rescue dog, he's not used to traveling. So we're still getting adjusted there. All right, next, <clears throat> let's talk about what gun I'm running. It's right here. So before, if you've seen any of my pictures on my Instagram or on my Facebook, then you've seen that lately I've been running the Scorpion Evo Carbine because it's long and I had a whole thing to go with my outfit. But this time I wanna switch it up, I wanna run something different. Still sticking with the long gun. I've got the Bren. This is the 805CZ Bren. This actually performs really well out of the box. I was really happy with it. I haven't used it in a long time, so I will be using it this weekend. Shoots actually insanely far for an out of the box gun. So I will be using this. Um, I've got the Fortis PTS angle foregrip on, not, it's not an angle foregrip. Grip, vertical grip, angled vertical grip. Yeah. <laughs> I've got uh, that on here on the Bren. I think it looks really nice. Looks kind of keeping with the futuristic theme of Desert Fox events. And I think these Fortis grips do a really good job of that. Uh, this is just a really comfortable, um, <clears throat> really comfortable grip in my opinion, as well as on the Bren, you can also fold the stock and use it um, in the pistol form, SMG form, SMG with a long ass barrel. <laughs> so uh, I like to fold my stock a lot for whenever I go indoors, because for a lot of games there's no MED. 
I know I could switch to pistol. I brought a pistol, but apparently I don't have any pistol mags with me. I was going to use the CZ P09, but I can't find my pistol mags anywhere. So, um, I'll just be folding the stock whenever I go inside a building or anything or when I'm clearing any corners. It'll make it, um, I can shoot like this reasonably well. And then I've got an ACOG on here just so that way I can see a little further. It is not a very good ACOG, so I wouldn't really use it to sight in um, just because it's not very accurate. But this will at least help me to see longer distances since I will have the range for longer distances with this Bren. Okay. Wait, she's going to D14 in Texas? Yes, this weekend. I will be at D14 in Texas for Desert Fox events battle for Delta 14. And I'm really excited about it because Desert Fox events games are some of my favorite games because they're really fun. <clears throat> All right, and lastly, on my body, I'm going to be wearing this. This is the 0300S. This is the LBX 0300S. And this is my preferred plate carrier. And let me put this down so I can give you a few reasons why this is my favorite plate carrier. So again, sticking with the theme of people with smaller frames need something that is a little bit smaller in width and in everything because um, stuff that's made for guys just doesn't work for people or stuff that's made for soldiers in general like big yoked out soldiers is not going to fit smaller more petite frames as well so uh, LBX has a really nice plate carrier this is the L0300S as I said before on it I have the Milsim West uh, phone pouch essentially so I would show you but I'm using my phone <laughs> right now so I put my phone in here and that runs the blue fox tracker app on it and so I can always see what's going on on my phone just by folding this down you put a little velcro on here and your phone will just stick to this pad so if I want to know what the objectives are or if I'm capturing an objective um, anything etc I've got it right here, makes it really easy, makes it where I'm not going to get my phone shot because I know a lot of people are concerned about that. Can capture objectives, can see everything really quick and then just fold it back up. Makes everything really simple and keeps it right here where I can see and access my phone and the Blue Fox Tracker app really easily. On the front, I've got Eagle, Eagle Industries double stack mag pouches and inside, oh, I've got the PTS Speed QB mags. These are in red. And that is one of my faction colors. So the faction colors for ERT, which is the side I'm going to be on. And it's also the side you should be on if you're going to this game. So the faction colors for ERT are red, green, and black. So you can wear any combination of those colors in any form. So these will be really nice accents to what I'm already running gonna look kind of like a little Christmas tree out there I think so I'm going to be carrying six mags these are mid caps I'll be carrying six mid caps on me plus one extra one in my gun I always wear the SKD tactical they make gloves these are my absolute favorite gloves a lot of uh, real steel shooters wear these as well and it is because you have a lot of dexterity in these. You can still use your touch screen phones with these X SKD Tactical Pig Alpha Touch Gloves. And they're really thin, allow you to do a lot, but still protect your hands. Hands down, my absolute best fitting favorite gloves of all time because I like being able to. And again, with Desert Fox events, you're going to be needing to use your phone. These allow you to use touchscreen devices while keeping your gloves on, which makes your life a lot, lot, lot easier. Okay, um, on the side, here in this canteen pouch, I've got 
my high viz vest. This is a requirement at all DFE games. Once you are dead, you put on your high vis vest, and the reason for that is a lot of times at these at airsoft games, you'll see that people um, get hit and then they're yelling about no one knowing that they're hit. Why are you shooting me when I'm already dead? Blah blah. blah. With the high vis vest, it wraps around your whole body. And so you never have to worry about getting shot after you're dead because these things are super easy to see. They go around your whole body, so there's not just going to be one tiny patch of a like a red rag out there. And uh, it's going to, it helps keep you from getting overshot. I've not really heard any complaints about people getting overshot at these games once they're dead because they have these high-vis vests on and it makes just makes life a lot easier in general, I think. Okay. Um, on the side, I've got my radio along with a PTT. Um, I haven't quite figured out how I want to mount this yet or if I'm even going to run a radio at these games. So at DFE games, they're not really necessary because there is a chat function in the Blue Fox Tracker, the app that, that, you're, that you're using during the game. Um, so radios aren't as necessary because you can communicate via the chat and you always know what's going on with the objectives always being marked and, and so on and so forth. So I haven't decided on this, but I do have uh, another Eagle Industries radio pouch for it, as well as I have my... Um, dump pouch here rolled up on the back of of my vest because I really really hate running a belt and so if I can get away from running a battle belt in general I do it so that's why I have my dump pouch on here because I don't want to run a battle belt and in the back I have this backpack with my inside will be my hydration pouch my faction patches here on the back so this is the LBX0306, this is the Assaulters pack, fits Molly's right here onto my gear, and inside, this is something that someone convinced me to carry with me, and it's a very smart tool. It's a jamming rod, unjamming rod, and you can just coil those up, put them inside your backpack, so that way if you ever have any jamming issues, easily cleared, don't have to leave the field makes life a lot easier so it's nice to carry an jamming rod with you as well all right so that's essentially what i'm going to be wearing if you follow me a lot you know that i like to run light as possible almost all the time and so that's why i'm not running a whole lot of gear really all i need are um enough space to hold some mags to hold my gun i'll have my um my evs on as well my uh, essentially paintball mask and so I like being as lightweight as possible now I the bad thing about that is is I don't really have a lot of space for smokes and or buddy grenades I can put some of those on the back um, but I honestly haven't had a lot of good experience with uh, with running buddy buddy systems on my back panels because people just look at me like I'm weird when I say I have a buddy grenade and they're always like what what did I do with that so um I don't really see a whole lot of sense in running in running that kind of system unless you're at a very advanced stage so if you're running with a team where everybody has this and you know everybody that you're running with if you're by yourself those um those buddy systems don't do a lot of good um, in, in new player environments, just because a lot of people are still figuring out how everything works and what to do, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that wraps up mainly my gear that I'm going to be wearing for this event this weekend. I'll go ahead and take your questions here for about 10 minutes or so. I don't know, depends on what kind of questions we get. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so that's what we'll do. Let me know if you have any questions about the Blue Fox Tracker or about how it works in the game at all. I know that a lot of people are concerned about um, getting their phone shot out, which I have to tell you guys, there have been, I think this is the fifth event, wait, no, fourth, 
fourth event that um, Desert Fox Events has had. And only one person has gotten their phone shot out, and that was because they literally took their phone out in the middle of a firefight and had the screen pointed at the enemy. So that's really the only way you're going to get your phone shot out at these games because you don't have to have your phone, your phone needs to be on but not totally open. Um, so for instance, when I want to go capture a point, I will get the app running, as you saw that I have, um, I have this rig right here. So I'll open it up, I'll have the app running, I'll see what I need to capture. Once I go to capture the point, I'll leave the app running, close this, run to the point, then I'm capturing the point and I don't have to be staring at my phone. That makes a world of difference, that helps a lot. <clears throat> Okay, any other questions? Let's see, y'all should try to meet up with Matt and Meredith. Uh, yeah, that would be cool. Um, I believe they're further further south. They're like San Antonio area, right? Right? Um, but we have hung out with Matt from Demolition Ranch a little bit. He has gotten more into airsoft, thanks to his brother, Operator Drewski. And, um really nice people and I hope to see a lot more of them at Airsoft in the future. Fortnite Gamer, do you use Cry? Hmm, not a lot. I have some Cry stuff but I actually don't like using it that much because it's so expensive and I just worry about it all the time. <laughs> um, honestly, it, it doesn't seem some of this cry stuff doesn't seem that much more durable than like knockoff stuff that's way cheaper cry makes all their money from the military anyway um so i don't know i don't wear a lot of cry no i don't have much of it it's really nice it can be really nice but i don't know i'm just i'm way too frugal for cry i think <laughs> it just hurts it 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 pains me to wear something that expensive. Team Traverse. I'm going to my first Milsim. Any tips? Um, my biggest advice would be to read up on, on how the event goes. Watch videos on, on the, the location of the event. So if you can go on YouTube and look up wherever the, the Milsim is being held at. If you can watch previous videos, that will give you a lot of insight into how the event is going to run. Make sure that you know the rules. Make sure that you're fully prepared for the game. I think the biggest thing that I see a lot of first timers do that's the most annoying is that they don't, they don't read all of the rules and they don't know what's going on a lot of the time and that would be easily avoided with just a tiny bit of research. So don't expect everyone to spoon feed you, but also don't be afraid to ask questions if you've done your research and you can't find the answer. Also, make sure you're hydrating and make sure that your gear is comfortable. So make sure you're hydrating at least three days before the event because you will, you do not want to heat cast. You need a lot of energy and you need to be pre-hydrated for that event. So make sure you're hydrating at least three days before the event. Make sure that your gear works and make sure that it's comfortable and make sure that you know your way around your gear and that it's comfortable. Trust me, there's nothing worse than to be wearing new gear or gear that you're not comfortable in and be bumbling around in the middle of a firefight or something like that. A bunch of people are yelling at you and that's definitely not what you want. So I would say make sure that you're comfortable in your gear and then also let other people take the lead. Make sure that you follow what other maybe veteran airsofters are doing and you'll learn pretty quickly from them. Man, savage bite fishing having a meltdown over using condor good grief <laughs> you guys don't have to type in all caps for me to answer your questions that just makes me think that you're yelling at me and it makes me like you less <laughs> um i've used condor yes i don't have a lot of condor um i use whatever gear works and whatever is comfortable i like any gear that is lightweight and that's comfortable if it's padded or or whatever else 
as long as it's comfortable. I don't really care what brand it is. I don't care about brands in Airsoft really at all. I just care about wearing and using what is comfortable and what works best for me. <clears throat> Let's see. Do you believe LCT is a good brand, good brand and manufacturer for the money? So I've heard a lot of good things about LCT. Most people say if you're going to buy an AK, you should buy LCT. Uh, if you watch my husband, Jet Desert Fox, he just released an unboxing video where he got a brand new LCT that was broken out of the box. Not totally broken, but the hop up was broken, and that's really disappointing. I don't know if that is, he just got really unlucky in that case, or what, but um, I've heard lots of great things about LCT. Everyone says that you should buy LCT if you're looking to get into AKs. Just um, hopefully you don't have that same experience. That's that's the only reason I don't want to like overboard recommend it just in case um, their quality's gone down a tiny bit. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with LCT right now. Um, other people have bought LCT and had it perform flawlessly out of the box, so that was a really helpful answer, wasn't it? <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Alternative pouches to the MSW phone pouch from that is a question from Nico. So a lot of people actually use the Juggernaut case. It's made for lots of different phone styles. It's extremely durable. And that is what I've seen most people using is the, the Juggernaut case. And that is actually what a lot of military use as well. Because if you're not familiar with it already, the military does currently use and basically like a phone app based um, uh, they use a phone based app right now <laughs> and it's called the blue force tracker so the blue fox tracker is a take on that and so a lot of the people that use the blue force tracker that are in the military use those juggernaut phone cases that I'm aware of <clears throat> um, how many mags do you usually run through in one milsim spawn and how many BBs per game um, beginning Genesis, that, that really varies on what is going on, how many firefights I get into, etc. I generally run about six to seven mags per game, six to seven mid caps. You really shouldn't need much more than that unless you're in some sort of really super crazy firefight and no one else is shooting. Um, you should generally be okay with like around six to seven mags mid caps during a milsim game. It's going to vary per milsim how many BBs you use. I usually try to bring at least one bottle. So you'll definitely need at least one bottle of BBs unless you're going to mill somewhere they give you your BBs. Um, and it's depending on what gun you're running as well. If you're running just a regular rifle, I would say one bottle of BBs and six to seven mags you should be set. <laughs> Do I like Glocks, Fortnite Gamer? I'm not a huge fan of Glocks. They're just not really comfortable to me. And so that's why I don't use as, I don't use Glocks as much just because they're they're uncomfortable. The grip is too canted for my tiny hands. And so it just is an uncomfortable grip for me. So I would rather use um, even 1911s more. What would be your recommended eye pro instead of the dye style paintball masks? So the other eye pro that I use pretty frequently is a Smith Optics Aegis. It's A-E-G-I-S. It's a relatively affordable. They are ANSI rated. You can also fit an Oakley Hilo kit in them if you need extra full seal. So some event promoters require full seal in the sense that it needs to cover your entire eye socket. Other people require full seal in the sense that it needs to have padding around your entire eye socket. And so it depends, it depends on what event promoter you are, are going to. Though I run the Smith Optics Aegis whenever I can. If you need a, if you're going to an event where the promoter is requiring foam essentially around your entire eye socket, then I would recommend Pyramex or Strike Systems makes a goggle that is hi jet <laughs> oh, I was gonna... 
Feel free to join me. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Jed is here. You can, if you want, for a moment. I'm just wrapping up the very end of it. Um, you'll have to crunch down, yeah. <laughs> Jed's here. Hi. Hi, hi, Jed. Hi, Jed. So, uh, I would recommend Pyramex or <laughs> Action Sports Games makes a goggle that works really well. That's actually what Jet uses a lot. And they don't really fog, and they only cost like $15. So, yes. Pretty good. Leah, please give us soldiers a shout out in Afghanistan. Shout out shout to the out. soldiers in Afghanistan. Shout out to all my shooters in Afghanistan. <laughs> Thanks for what you do. Ace, Ace Just stand. kidding. Thank you all for your guys' service. Yeah. Appreciate Someone's got to be on watch. Yeah. It's, I'm done. <laughs> Is Jed a millionaire? He's a YouTube millionaire <laughs> with a million subs. <clears throat> Is the app required for these events? Gsofter556. So the app is actually free. So if you don't, ha if you are concerned about that aspect of it, you don't have to buy it. So that makes it really easy. However, it's not required. It does make the event a lot more enjoyable for you. Um, that's the other thing I should have told you. If you are running the app, then you should definitely make sure that you have a battery pack and a cord that's connected to that battery pack. Because while the app does actually does not drain a lot of battery on your phone, it uses even less than like your maps functions do. So my phone battery can last about a day with a half a day with constantly using the app, but then I need to plug it in. So make sure that you have a battery pack and a cord that you can easily connect it to and that you can wear on, on your person. So I will have... I will have my battery pack in this backpack. The cord runs out through here, through this, through these shoulder pads, and then it will connect right here. So it makes it really easy for me, and it's not going to get in the way that way. So that's how I run the app and use a battery pack at the same time. Okay, quick recap, anyone. So for those of you that are just joining, or if you did just join, just rewind to the start <laughs> to see everything. But essentially what we're talking about is Desert Fox Events Battle for Delta 14 this weekend. I went over all of the gear that I'm going to be wearing and what gun I'm going to be using. And now what we're doing is I'm just answering a few questions about the app. If you have any questions about how the Blue Fox Tracker works or the game this weekend. Um, again, registration is open until Friday, so you can still register and be on the winning team, ERT, <laughs> <laughs> along with GMR. Yeah, yeah. Is Texas as far east as y'all are going? Yes. We did go to Mississippi last weekend for Milsom West. However, uh, this time we'll be going here to Texas. I'll be going to see my family in Kansas for Thanksgiving, and then we're driving back to California. <clears throat> happy early Thanksgiving, everyone. Yes, happy early Thanksgiving. What do you think of the GMR team? Um, I think they're... I have not had any negative experiences with them, and it is... Um, kind of my policy to not really say anything about anyone until I really know them as a person or have met them, etc. I've only had good interactions for the most part with GMR. Ronan uh, from GMR has been really nice. He's super into Airsoft. He's really passionate about Airsoft and I think that's what we need is more people who are passionate about Airsoft and willing to live that. So. Um, I understand why they rub some people the wrong way, but I I think it's great how how many people they're able to get into airsoft and how on point they are for a lot of other airsofters and I don't know, you ran with them at um Saratov. Yeah. So their littles have their stuff together, that's nice. <laughs> I guess like I'll do a condensed version of like I think how everyone overall sees GMR. So GMR is this like on the internet super edgy team that everyone memes on and then 
There was some cheater video. There was a cheater. There's a huge cheater video, video of Ronan. Um, since then, Ronan has had a kid and has grown up a little bit. <laughs> so that basically, they know they know where they've come from and they know where they want to go, and they are trying their hardest to not be those guys anymore. Quite honestly, there's tons of other cringier, worse, worse attitude teams out there. At least now, yeah. At, at least now they they've realized like, okay, we were buttholes before, but we don't want to be known as the, we don't want to be those guys anymore. And they're really trying to turn that image around. And quite honestly, I think people should give them a chance. Like it to me, it really seems that it really seems like Ronan genuinely is committed as much as like I am to airsoft and airsoft is pretty much my entire life. Pretty much it is. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, I mean, give them a chance. We're giving them a chance here at Desert Fox events. Obviously if, if things were terrible, we would not have them be a part of our organization. So yeah, yeah, we're, we're trying to give them a chance and we give everyone a chance. You know, we want, we we all we want to do at Desert Fox events is give everyone who attends the most enjoyable airsoft experience that they can have, you know, that's fun and safe and, and friendly. Uh Desert Fox events are some of my favorite games to go to, honestly, because they're it's a different it's a completely different style of game. It's something that's different from any other event promoters that you've seen out there, especially in use with the app. Everything is just so much easier with the app. Um, You can dress futuristic. You can do a lot of cosplay, which is what I've enjoyed doing with the the Desert Fox events games. So they're a lot more casual. They're really fun. I definitely recommend them for your first Milsim if you're looking to get into Milsim. You can also dress, you know, in modern high speed yeah. kit too if you want yeah you it, don't have to be a nerd like me yeah it's basically everything <laughs> across the board as long as you're within the the color and uniform standards which is nice you know if, especially if you're not like an impressionist i wore acu i, I wore a 2010 ranger kit last weekend it's cool but quite honestly it wasn't the most comfortable thing and yeah i definitely wish i could have just worn my own stuff but i mean that was for an impression yeah. Um, what gun is Jet going to be using at the event? I'm actually not sure yet. My That's, 416. I didn't know that yeah, my 416 died last weekend at Milson West. I uh, I stripped the gear because I just kept grind. I don't know. I I met, it was my fault. I could hear the gun going, and I was just like, no, I'm just gonna keep pulling the trigger. And now I stripped the gear. So I did bring an SSG24 as a backup but I would rather use some sort of rifle or maybe a submachine gun. I don't know. We'll see. I'll figure something out. I like how everyone's doing West Virginia memes in the chat right now. Oh, they are? Yes, yes. So uh, if you haven't already watched my Mountain Mama video, watch it. (laughs) (laughs) And then you'll understand what everyone's talking about. Also Fallout 76, but I think um, my video is almost as cool as Fallout 76. Just kidding. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> okay, I, um, let's see. How long have we been streaming for? 38 minutes. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I will take... Um, a couple more questions, so hurry up and type as fast as you can. I'll take one, maybe two more questions, depending on how good they are. And then we will wrap up this stream, because, um, I gotta put all my stuff away now that it's laying all over this floor of this Airbnb. (laughs) Oh, how long do airsoft batteries last fully charged? It varies. Yeah, it does. It really varies on how much you're using your gun. and. Yeah, let's say, okay, is. for instance, if you have an 11.1 1500 milliamp battery and you go ham, that battery will probably last you maybe half the day. It might not make it half the day. 
but let's say you have a 7.4 2600 milliamp battery that's probably going to last the entire weekend and you let's say you have a 2600 milliamp battery and you shoot semi-automatic and you only shoot at people you know you can hit your problem your battery will probably last you the entire weekend it's really all just how many milliamps are in the battery and how often you shoot yep. so if you know you're trigger happy buy batteries that have more milliamps if you know that you are not trigger happy <laughs> you'll be fine with something with Who's like not trigger 1500 happy. milliamps this is a good question from tom starwin are players using the waypoint feature more at recent dfe games i think it was underused at battle for la yes actually i screenshotted somebody from an airsoft republic game who made a waypoint and it was called josh's secret castle <laughs> <laughs> and it was the little castle icon yeah i agree that waypoints are underused and i think that's just a an aspect of people not knowing the app as well or not using it as much I think when Desert Fox Airsoft or when these events come back around and people have used the app a little more, I think they'll be a little more fluent and probably use the app in a little more detail. Um, so one of the great places to do that is the Friday before Desert Fox events games, they have a, a test run with the app. So if you're not familiar with the app, they set up a, a like basically a fake game in the staging area and everyone can learn the ins and outs of the app. So I definitely recommend being there early so that way you can test out the app and make sure you know how to use it before the game starts on Saturday. Yep, definitely. I will say that there is an update coming fairly soon. Mm -hmm. uh, some insider information, there will be an update and it looks like with the new update, the app will be able to be used outside of our events and it should have it should have a squad mm -hmm. formation feature but that's all we still have to hash that out with our app development team and stuff but is that is definitely the next thing that we're trying to push for in the development of this of the app yay mm -hmm. That's exciting. Okay, well with that good news, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this stream because it's been going on for a long time. So, thank you everyone for joining. Sorry that I was like super rambly and kind of out of it. I'm a little frazzled today, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll be all good. I will have a video out um, either tomorrow or Friday, so make sure that you are getting notifications from my channel. You're probably all subscribed to Jet. If you're not, subscribe to Jet. He is has excellent Milsim gameplay videos under Desert Fox Airsoft. You're probably all subscribed. You probably found me from Jet. <laughs> or not, Node. <laughs> if not, check out check out my channel. I've got some gameplay on there right now from last weekend. Shot it on my cell phone. <laughs> okay, so we will see you guys. I'll try to live stream a little bit from the Battle for Delta 14 this weekend. So hopefully I will be able to get some of that in. We'll see you guys again soon. I said okay. up so I want to know that I'm actually oh, not short. Cut your head off, yeah. This okay. is me sitting up, <laughs> me laying back. Come to Grand Junction, up. Colorado. I've been there so many times. I love it. Leaning back. Okay, bye. Yeah.